Welcome, welcome everyone. I'm going to give you guys a couple of moments to jump on so everybody can find us here. Say hello if you're here. Are you ready to get activated? You guys, this is this is big. I'm going to bring the intensity to becoming comfortable with intensity. All right. We're going to be doing a mix of, hey, Lindsay. Hi, Daisy. I'm just going to give people space to find the room. Good morning, Heather. I'm so excited too. So excited, you guys. Everything that has dropped in around this is just like, get ready to have your minds blown. Get ready to have your human uh, stretched for sure into expanded consciousness and higher perspective. Get ready to integrate um, new codes, higher level codes that are that have been coming in from the universe for since really the end of December, December, 2023, um, that are, have really been coming to a peak and are just gonna continue to open in 2024. But um, this is gonna set you guys up so nicely for this year. Hey, Danuta, how are you? I'm glad you found the room. All right, cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tell you guys that we've already raised over $200, I think, for Sparrow's Nest. Um, and you do not have to do this. It's not required for being part of this masterclass, but if any of you feel called to honor a sacred exchange for this event, um, we are going to be pulling the name of, from a hat for everybody who has given a donation to Sparrow's Nest. Sparrow's Nest is a charity that is very near and dear to my heart. It's locally local here. I've helped them out. I've supported them in a lot of different ways and a lot of different events. And um, I've chosen this one in particular because um, a friend of mine who has a, has been a colleague for probably 15 years um, died at 41 of colon cancer in January. And Sparrow's Nest was amazing to her. They were amazing to her. They are a phenomenal charity and I just, I love them. The woman who runs it is just really devoted and heart-centered. Um, I think she started it from losing her mother. And so I really wanted to give back and offer everybody else the opportunity to give as well. And so if you feel called, again, not required, but if you feel called to submit a donation, um, I just put the information in the comments of the chat here. And um, yes, it's going to be, it's going to stay here in the expansion portal, Dunuda. So you will have this uh, recording for the future if you can't stay for the whole time or for those of you who need to come back. So if you submit a donation, send an email, all the information is there in the comments, send an email to emergehealingandwellness at gmail.com with a subject line donation and a screenshot of your completed transaction so that we can enter you into the drawing to win a free Akashic card reading from me. So that drawing is going to be completed at 1145 AM Eastern. So make sure that if you want to donate, you do that before then. And um, I'll be announcing the winner later on in the masterclass. Okay. So those are the orders of business. Now let's get down to business. So how many of you have been experiencing intensity in your fields lately? because I know very few people who have not been experiencing intensity in their fields lately. Sometimes the intensity is good intensity. Let's keep this in mind. Like when we talk about intensity, we're not just talking about like, you know, shit hits the fan or, oh my gosh, I can't believe how many downloads I'm getting intuitively, right? Like it can be really positive intensity. It can be a lot of momentum. Either way, it can overwhelm the nervous system. It can overwhelm the energy field. Um, and you can have a very similar response internally or energetically to intensity that comes in as extreme excitement, right? So uh, you can either leave how you've been feeling in emojis. I've been doing that a lot lately <laughs> with my fire emojis and my mind blown emojis and my electric emojis. Um, but let me know how you've been feeling in the field. Like if you've been feeling this intensity, yes, feeling the intensity, 100%. And um and I, I love it. And it's also like, 
all at the same time, right? Which is why this masterclass is so supportive, not only for now, but for the duration of 2024 with all the energy that's going to be coming in. So um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for, for joining and saying hello and sharing how you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to start by just giving this a little preface to what I've already introduced around the context of this masterclass, which is this concept of you can have it all if you can hold it all, right? And the problem is, is that when we get a lot of things coming towards us, again, whether it's labeled as positive or negative by our ego, it can feel very un overwhelming and unmanageable. And we can feel like we're like swimming in the human sauce, lost in the human sauce, having trouble bringing our heads above water and having trouble feeling really centered and Zen and stabilized, despite also feeling excitement or rocked or grieving or whatever is coming forward. Okay. So the number one thing that I'm going to bring forward right now, yes, but it's moving on. Yep. It's, it's moving. It's always moving. It's energy. It's always moving, right? I like to assist the energy with moving, but okay. The one thing that I want to bring forward to start here is this concept of responsibility, because a lot of people shy away from facing intensity and receiving intensity and confronting intensity and being with intensity because they don't necessarily want to. I then have to do with it, right? What do I then have to do with it? And does feel it and it knows what's coming and it knows what's on the other side. And so it can shrink, right? It can kind of shrink down and be like, oh, no, 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 no. I want to avoid intensity, right? I want to avoid intensity. And some of this is the nervous system because of how it's been wired and it's just like, you know, gets reactive to these things and thinks the danger is coming to us and its role is to keep us safe and to keep us alive, right? And so it will respond to intensity, whether it's extreme, whether it's sudden, whether it's transient, whether it's sustained, right? In a way that feels draining to us, in a way that feels exhausting and like we have to constantly manage ourselves. And then we just feel like, it, it, yeah, how's everybody doing with the internet? Are you guys doing okay with the internet? Is it cutting out or are you guys hearing me and seeing me okay? Uh, let me know. But my, I have two questions here for you that I really want you to answer around this concept of, oh, it's freezing. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so let me let me check out what it looks like here. Hold on one second. Yeah, I do look a little freezy. All right, how is it now? Good now. Okay, cuts out momentarily. Okay. If this continues, please let me know, guys, because I don't want you to miss the content and I can come back and start this over or uh, go live from my phone. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it. So after that little hiccup, thank you for the technology support. Um, I have two questions for you. And this is something to tune into and to expose. Yeah, I know. Intensity, right, Anita? Bringing too much energy to this. I have a lot of energy coming into this, so I would not be surprised if that's the issue. Um, do you desire to hold it all? And when I say hold it all, that doesn't mean you're meant to hold everything in the universe, right? You get to be discerning about what you choose, what intensity you choose to hold and what you don't choose to hold. But we also don't want to be in a space of avoidance of intensity, Right. And shying away from intensity, particularly that that serves us. And we're going to get into this a lot today. OK, but do you desire to hold all that is meant for you? 
right? And these questions are meant to be an exposure for your nervous system, okay? They're meant to be an exposure so that you can be with whatever comes up, whatever sensations come up in the body, whatever emotions come up in the body, whatever shifting comes up in the body when we connect to these questions and the energy of these questions. Do you desire to hold all that is meant for you? The second question, are you willing to hold whatever you're meant to on behalf of God's mission through you? Are you willing to hold whatever you're meant to on behalf of God's mission through you? And I use the word God, source, spirit, interchangeably, universe, interchangeably. So whatever you're comfortable with, insert word there. Are you willing to hold what is meant for you on behalf of God's mission through you? Because this is what I say all the time. It's like God's mission through you is bigger and more important than anything on this planet. Any relationship you have, any task you have to complete, any deadlines you have to fulfill, any of it. So again, this is exposure therapy for you. I'm ready and willing to hold all, just need to find a better way to deal with it. That's why we're here today. Oh, I love these. I love these things that come up. It's so fabulous. I'm going to see if I can turn it off. No, I can't turn it off right now. I've turned it off so many times, but it still happens. Okay. So hopefully we'll get, yeah, scary, but exciting. That's the best way for expansion. Hopefully we'll get the balloons coming across the screen today. That always makes me happy. Okay. So as I said, that's just a brief exposure there to give to you guys, okay, to breathe in and to start to expand into this taking responsibility for what is being handed to you, okay? Because everything that comes up in your field is being handed to you by source itself, okay? Everything is being handed to you by source. So we want to receive it as a gift without attaching labels to it and stories to it and just receive the energy and allow our fields to integrate and internalize it in a way that enhances our frequency and consciousness and ability to be more of who we are, right? Because the fact is we are being invited by source into all that we are, into holding all of ourselves. And so everything that comes at us or seemingly comes at us or through us is meant to invite more of us online, which sometimes brings forward things that don't feel so cozy comfy, like old memories, like old sensations, like emotions that feel overwhelming to the nervous system, okay? All right, so intensity is not an emotion, right? This is what I said in my, my starting text for this event. It's Emotion is the byproduct of intensity. It's a natural human response, but it is a product of the energetic field that has been designed by your soul to serve whatever part of its purpose is meant to do and is meant to unfold in this lifetime, right? The part of your soul's purpose that is meant to be completed in this lifetime. So the emotion is a byproduct of the shifts and the reception of the intensity that arrives, okay? So many of us mistake emotion as intensity, but it's really an invitation into emotional mastery. Okay. Intensity is an invitation into emotional mastery. Okay. And if you feel like intensity is this unrelenting pressure that will not release, then you're trying to do too much on your own and you don't have to hold everything. You have to be more discerning about what is moving through and what is not yours to hold. Right. Which we're going to be talking about a little bit, but we're going to go a lot deeper than that. So that's just kind of my intro here, giving you a context of where we're coming from when we're talking about intensity. But there's five different forms of intensity that we're going to be discussing today and the way that they show up. And I, and I want you guys to be interactive here. Like, I want you to speak up. I want you to use your voice. I want you to share what comes forward in your field and what gets activated within you as we are doing this. Okay. And as I'm bringing forward these areas in your life, you may come up with stories or examples that arise. But the first thing that I want everybody to do 
other than those two questions that we started with, right? That was kind of priming your field. This one is humbling your ego a little bit and admitting to the fact that there is pleasure in the pain that you experience. How many of you have read Existential Kink by Dr. Carolyn Elliott? She's great with this shit because she talks about how our subconscious minds get off on anything that exists in our field that we feel is unsavory, right? Or any, any patterns or things that occur that we quote unquote do not desire, right? The fact is we do desire it at some level because it wouldn't exist if it weren't serving a purpose for us, right? There is pleasure in pain. We can get really, really uh, kinky here and start talking about uh, BDSM, right? We're talking about that. I mean, that's the whole premise of that. You know, and like in anything, sure, that can be that can be used in ways that that are not necessarily for everyone. But the fact is, it's about recognizing that pain is simply a sensation that is determined to be pain by the mind, right? And so it's it's recognizing that it's energy. This is just energy. And that we are receiving something pleasurable from it. Okay, so admit that you have called this in and that there is a part of you, not intentionally, but there's a part of you that has created this for a higher purpose. And the fact is there's always gonna be pleasure, immense pleasure on the other side of pain, always, if you embrace it, okay? So I'm going, going to define intensity here for you in the traditional sense of the word. And we're going to talk about the root of this word as well. And after we discuss that framework, we're going to dive into the different types of intensity. But I want to give you guys an overarching definition here before we begin, okay? With the nitty gritty. So intensity is defined as an extreme degree of strength, force, energy, or feeling. An extreme degree of strength, force, energy, or feeling. The magnitude of a quantity, such as force of energy, force or energy. The magnitude of a quantity. Saturation. I don't know about you, but I would love I love intentionally calling in. And that's what we're going to be talking about too today is like intentionally calling in and inviting immersion, bathing, soaking, saturating myself in intensity, right? We can get off on this in ways that deeply serve our soul because that's what we're being called to. But we, we have trouble admitting that. We kind of shy away from admitting that, Okay. Another definition is extremely earnest or serious. Okay. Highly concentrated is the last one. Highly concentrated. Okay. So I say these slowly and I give space between them because I want you to recognize if there's anything coming up inside of you when these are spoken. It will typically activate a, I don't believe that, or that's not what it feels like to me, or, oh, that hits me, or, oh, I feel that, right? Just identifying where this arrives in your field, because words, when we're playing with words, they are a frequency. They were created by human beings. We get to find our own definitions of these things, energetically, spiritually, consciously, right? We get to find our own definition of these things. And by playing with the frequency of words, we get to feel into how it lands in the body and where it comes into a nice little nook and settles in and says, ah, oh, yes, that's what intensity feels like to me. That's what it means like to me. So, or means to me. Okay. The root word of intensity is intensus. Okay. I'm going to give you guys my opinion on this sucker. Intensus means stretched tightly strained, affected or produced by effort, not natural or spontaneous, forced or injury. I'll read those again. Stretched tightly. How does this feel in the body, you guys? When I say this, what does this feel like in your body? The root word intensus. Stretched tightly, 
strained, affected or produced by effort, not natural or spontaneous, forced and injury. What does that feel like in your body, in your field? Ooh, getting chills. I feel the need to like stretch, right? Like expand, open. Because I want to hold more space for what this actually is because this definition is so distorted. It's so distorted. We have the ability to hold intensity without tension in the body. We have the ability to hold and be with and alchemize intensity without immense effort. We can do it intentionally and deliberately rather than not natural or spontaneous. It's intensity is extremely natural. It's extremely natural. Look at the universe, right? It feels uncomfortable. Look at the universe. The universe is the epitome of intensity. Shit is exploding out there all the time, right? Like the, the level of impact that exists in the universe energetically. There's stars colliding. There's matter combining. There's new objects and stars being created all the time, right? There is so much intensity. The center of our galaxy is a gigantic black hole, which will literally obliterate everything that enters its vortex into energetic fractals, right? Talk about intensity. The intensity or the universe is in us and we are part of the universe. We are not exempt from feeling intensity. It's actually extremely natural and, ex and, and can, be, can be deliberate, part of God's divine plan, right? We want to bring ourselves online with this instead of feeling like we are victims of intensity. And the way that this is defined really implies that we are victims of it. We get to expand ourselves to meet this concept of intensity in a way that feels really empowered and deliberate in our bodies. And then offer ourselves the space to integrate and saturate and immerse, where in that definition, we are still operating within the energetic frequency of intensity, but in a much gentler, more manageable, malleable form. Nothing's happening to us. We are going toward it. Okay. And we are claiming it from a place of more centeredness. Is anybody's mind exploding yet? Is anyone super confused? It's okay if you are. I want you to realize that over the course of this masterclass, you're going to be getting some really deep downloads, some really big mindset shifts, some really powerful energy, new earth templates that are going to be grounding into the body and, um, and finding their, their pathway within your nervous system and within your energetic chakra system as well. So any sensations or emotions that come up during this masterclass, be with them, be present with them, be honest uh, that they're, that they're there with yourself. Right. And also know that, that any nugget that you take from this is what you're meant to take from it. And it will be in this group for all time. You can come back, you can grab new nuggets at another level of consciousness and another version of who you are at another time when you have more space and energy. Right. But don't try to just take everything down as a, as a type A people pleasing good student, right? Instead, we want to feel into what's coming forward with these definitions I'm going to be sharing with you going forward. Okay. Feel into it and allow yourself to, to receive today, right? Allow yourself to get activated because there are seeds being planted within you during this experience. All right. So no shame in your mind, in your mind, kind of feeling strained with this. And that's why I want to keep bringing you back into the body and into sensation. Okay. Cause the mind is going to be like, what? No, what? Okay. So we're going to do some of that feeling into it too, as I start talking about these five areas of intensity. Okay. So the five areas of intensity, each one of these areas can exist internally or externally or both. Okay. Each one of these areas can exist internally, externally, or both, which means you can feel these categories of intensity from an internal experience of emotion or thought or sensation, or you can be in response to intensity that feels like it's coming at you from the outside of your field. The intensity that's internal, you could even consider being part of your auric field. Okay. Or being part of your intuition. Some people consider that external completely up, completely up to you. Okay. But I want you to consider these, 
these categories in both contexts, all right? And whatever comes up naturally just within the body, within the field, as I mention these things, just go with. Don't analyze it with the brain, okay? We don't want to come at this from the mind. Okay, so the first area of intensity that we're going to talk about today is intensity in pace or timing, okay? So if we're talking about internal intensity and pace and timing, how many of you have felt a pace of your mind or of your nervous system going a million miles a minute? Raise your hand. I know I have. Okay. And the idea of this masterclass is not to take that entirely away because the fact is we are humans and there needs to be a level of divine gracious acceptance that our souls chose to be in human form to experience these kinds of sensations and experience these kinds of things. So what's going to happen is, yes, this may still present for you over the course of your human lifetime. But the way that you're going to approach it and manage it and be with it is very different, is going to be much more graceful and is going to lower the intensity, the frequency and the duration of these experiences going forward. Okay. So internally with pace and timing, it's this internal pressure. Got to meet a deadline. Got to do, got to do. Mine's going a million miles a minute. Your, your emotions are shifting rapidly is another thing with pace internally. Externally, give me some examples. What do you guys have as examples of external intensity in pace and timing? Deadlines placed on you, expectations, what else? What comes up in your field that feels like it's coming at you in terms of intensity in that way? And then we're going to do a quick visual here. Like a visualization slash little energy work meditation here to call this one in and to really feel this into the body. Are you guys just quiet or am I not getting comments? There we go. Cool. Thank you guys. I wasn't getting comments, so I'm just going to keep my phone open. Rushing expectations. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So this is the part of intensity that I feel is very closely related to the word intensive. So we can talk about, well, I'm, I'm, doing an Akashic intensive, right? Where we're going to really, what does that mean? Like if I say to you, we're doing an Akashic intensive, what does that mean to you? It means that we are going to go deep and we're going to cover a lot of ground and a lot of depth in a short period of time, right? I'm condensing what you would typically learn or integrate or shift in three months, six months, nine months, a year's time and we're bringing it to a 90 minute intensive. And we're just going to say, we are going to go deep. We're going to go fast. We're going to go, don't get dirty on me. Um, that's what they did in my vitality when I used that one time. Um, but anyway, <laughs> my vitality program. And, and we're going to cover a lot of ground. That doesn't mean quantity necessarily, but we're going to cover a lot of depth over a short period of time. Okay. So that alone, that definition can make you feel like, oh, okay, this is a lot. This is going to be a lot. This is going to be a lot to hold. But we we like hype ourselves up, right? We we make it bigger than it needs to be. What if we trusted ourselves more? What if we believed in ourselves more? What if we believed how deeply we are connected to the universe, that the universe is us, that we are the universe, and that we've always got this, right? Like we take it so damn seriously, recognize that when we're talking about pace and timing, we get to choose based on the cues that come into us from the universe. So recognize that the universe is seasonal. It's not constantly blowing up con like all the time in the same spot, right? Here on earth, we have seasons right? We have seasons. And so you're going to have seasons where you're being invited into more intensity and seasons where you're not. 
And so it's like, when that comes, we feel all twitchy, but really what we're meant to realize is this is a breath of fresh air. This is great. The universe is seeing that I am capable, that I have space available to be able to expand my capacity and hold more. The universe wants me to hold more and it's ready for me to move into that next level of me faster than I thought I was ready, which is a compliment, right? It's like a compliment from the universe. And it's like a lot, like soak it in, allow it in, welcome it and give yourself space during those times, knowing that there's going to be other times when the energy is quieter. Those are the times that you're meant to integrate. And so this is about listening to the natural rhythm of your energy field and your soul and what it is delivering to actualize the purpose you're meant to actualize in this lifetime. Okay. And so when we're talking about pace and timing, we're not listening to the body necessarily all the time. And we're not always listening to everything that's coming out, coming at us from outside of us. We want to tune into a higher level energy here. Don't like, don't get so serious, get curious. What is this season that I'm in? Right? Even ask the universe, what, what is this season that I'm in? Knowing that you're being prepared, right? And that you don't have to fall prey then. This is where you can choose. You don't have to fall prey to external direction around your pace and timing. You don't even have to fall prey to your internal pace and timing that comes up from your body, from your nervous system. Because this is where you get to take responsibility. Here's that responsibility word again and come in and own and, and parent your nervous system and say, I know that this feels like a lot for you. And I know this isn't a pace that you typically operate at but it's okay. We've got this. This is the old way of thinking. We no longer have to operate like we did when we were cavemen and our nervous systems had to be like constantly on alert for what was coming at us. Those are the nervous systems that still exist within our physical bodies. You guys, there are so many ancestral narratives that are attached to that. We actually get to say to our nervous systems, we live in a different time now, right? We live in a different space now. And it's just like, I think it was Eli Wiesel that was talking about when he was in the Holocaust and the concentration camps. And he was talking about how like he was literally wasting away and everything was miserable, right? And he was able to find freedom within while he was trapped in that space. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It just gives me chills, right? We get to teach our nervous systems a new way of holding energy. Okay. So that's a big concept. I'm going to be giving you guys some big concepts here today, but what I want you to realize is that as you, your intuition continues to expand, your discernment is going to get very clear on these kinds of things, right? When the pace and the timing comes in, it's like, okay, I have the data from my body. I have the data from outside and I have the data from higher dimensions. I have the data from source, from my soul, right? So I'm going to give you an example because I want you to feel into this, okay? And this is going to help you feel into your discernment to start to enhance and refine your intuition to get more intimately connected to the subtle nuances of your own energy, okay? Okay? Because when you are connected to the subtle nuances of your own energy and you have a really good pulse on them, on it. Oh, hold on one second. I just want to see if everybody can see me. Okay, cool. Great. Yes, I have all the time that I need. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, the more discernment that you have the easier this is going to be for you. And the way that we that we manage discernment and, and sharpen discernment is through refining our intuition and getting more deeply connected to our energetic blueprint and our soul. So let's feel into this and just start to call some of these codes in and start to invite some of these energies in for us, okay? Um, okay, so let's just close our eyes for a second and take a nice deep breath in.
Allow your jaw to soften, to loosen your face to soften. Allow the shoulders to fall back and down. Nice deep breaths all the way up and down your spine. Allow your exhale to be slower than your inhale. And I want you to relax the cheeks once again, soften the eyelids, any areas of your body where you're holding tension. Just allow them to be fully held up by the space in which you're sitting. Deep breaths, expanding the rib cage to the sides. And allowing your breath to extend all the way down into your feet, anchoring into the root system of Mother Earth. Allowing the warm energy from Mother Earth to rise up into the physical body. Warming and soothing and nourishing every one of your cells and every system of the body and every energy center. Continue to breathe slowly and deeply as this energy warms the body, settles into the heart space. And we open up the crown chakra just above the top of our heads, welcoming in divine energy pouring through the crown, cooling and awakening every little pocket of the body, every energy center. Allow these energies of Mother Earth and the ether to mix, to find harmony, and to distribute throughout your entire field. Really feeling anchored into the heart space, held in the body. And it's from here that we are going to intentionally expose ourselves to experience of intensity in pace and timing. I want you to imagine that there is a circle of quicksand in front of you. You dip your toe in and you kind of shiver a little bit. You place one foot in and you can feel that it's very, very slowly absorbing your foot. So you sit on the ground next to this little circle of quicksand and you put your other foot in. Slowly starting to get absorbed very, very slowly into the quicksand. Nice deep breath in to expand the rib cage. You allow yourself to stand now in this circle of quicksand. Knowing that in this visual, you have the ability to stop any time the sensation becomes too intense for your physical body. Allowing your legs to very slowly start, very, very slowly start to become absorbed in the quicksand. Moving up to the calves. Sinking in to the knees. And it's at this point that you start to look around. You start to look around for a branch to hold on to. For something to anchor you. So you don't get fully immersed in this fully absorbed. You may find something to hold on to. You may not yet. That's okay. We're just up to the thighs now. Nice deep breaths in, expanding the heart, expanding the rib cage, sending the exhale down into the root, all the way through the feet. You notice as you do so, you rise up just a little bit in this quicksand when you push that air all the way down through the feet, lightening the body, lightening the frequency. 
returning to a normal breath. You sink just a little bit deeper to the hips. To the belly button. To the chest. Allowing your shoulders to start getting covered now. And it's at this point that we pause and we breathe. Expand your nervous system to feel safely suspended right here. Just be with it, be with the sensation that's coming up in the body and any emotions that are arising. And whenever you're ready, you can pull yourself back out of that quicksand. Resting on the side, legs crossed in lotus position, hands in prayer pose right next to this circle of quicksand, being in gratitude and appreciation for its invitation into the expansion of our capacity. and to its willingness to offer us the opportunity to see what we are capable of, how much choice we have, how much space we have. And this is what I want you to imagine, and you can open your eyes whenever you're ready, if you haven't already. But this is what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine that this quicksand was fast, right? Because we're talking about intensity in terms of pace and timing. Imagine that this quicksand was fast, what would have happened differently with your nervous system, right? When you have, when you have a slower pace, you have the ability to look around. You have the ability to get curious. You have the ability to, um, to consider options, to look for alternatives, to brainstorm, to reach out, to ask for help, right? So what this is about entirely is creating space, right? Creating space for yourself. Allowing yourself to realize that this is the seasonal part, that sometimes this quicksand is going to be slow and sometimes it's going to be fast, right? So let me know how this felt for you. How did this experience feel in the body and in your emotional experience? And I know that some people are having trouble coming back into finding the live. I think that Facebook blocked it for some reason. So what we're going to do is if you guys have trouble, we're just going to re-upload the video after this is complete. Um, so if you're having any trouble, we will, um, you'll still have access to the content, but let me know how that was feeling for you. It's almost like we're doing a little bit what they would call exposure therapy to these kinds of things. But what we're doing is we're expanding our nervous system capacity and we're expanding it to match what we're actually capable of, which is the space and the intensity exists in the universe. Sometimes things happen slowly in the universe and slowly developing, and sometimes things are rapid. Okay. So you can redo this same experience and going into the quicksand rapidly. As long as you feel grounded and rooted and held and safe in your human to be able to do so. Okay, so this is the way that we honor the human, but we also expand into holding the energies of the universe that carry the intensity that invite us into depth. Okay? All right. The second area that we are going to talk about when it comes to intensity is pressure or force. Okay? So... When we have pressure or force, oh, I'm sorry, we're talking about temperature and density. I'm getting distracted because there's so many people that are, I feel so bad that this is happening with the, uh, with the technology, but it is what it is. So um, this was just meant to, this, this intensity is busting the internet. Okay, so the second space that we're going to talk about under the intensity umbrella 
is temperature and density. Okay. So this is intensity in obviously extreme cold, extreme heat, right? Um, we can be feeling an internal temperature. We can feel, be feel like our, our anger is rising, right? That can heighten our internal temperature. Our temperature internally can shift when we're connecting to Akashic energies, which are super cooling, right? Um, and we can also feel like a texture and a density to intensity when it arises in the body and in the field. Okay, so it's being aware of the temperature of intensity that's coming in. Okay, and I think just recognizing that there's intensity and temperature and density is something that is really, really important to just have in our awareness, right? And what this is about is exposing yourself beyond your comfort zone, okay? Exposing yourself beyond your comfort zone. So this is when we're talking about temperature and density, this is when we do relate to the definition of highly concentrated. This is when intensity is highly concentrated. So you might get like a really tiny crystal, right? Like a really, really tiny crystal like this. But it could be such a high vibrational crystal that it packs a punch. It's super dense in vibration, super, super dense in vibration, okay? And so this one, again, we're going to talk about this one very quickly here, because this one, again, is we're talking about the, the, the space that we're choosing, okay? The space that we're choosing to extend and expose ourselves to the intensity of temperature. So for instance, in my vitality program, I have a meditation, a walking meditation that invites people to go outside when it is either a lot hotter or most even better, a lot colder than what they're accustomed to. They can bundle up shore, but it's like, give them, give yourself space to show yourself that you can tolerate it, right? And you're not going to go out into like, you know, Mount Everest and expose yourself to something that's going to cause you to die, right? Like, let's be realistic here, but you're going to choose something that is outside of the realm of comfortable sensation, because this is a way of you showing, showing yourself, I can handle this right? Like I can expand space for this and open tolerance for this. Okay. And then you're going to listen to the body. You're going to listen to the nervous system here. This is when we do listen to the nervous system in the body and we allow it to tell us that, okay, I've expanded. I'm a little bit past my comfort zone. And the reason it's helpful to, to listen to the body and the nervous system at this point is because it shows us where we have space to extend even further, to extend a little bit further, right? And so it's like, okay, great. Now I'm here. Thank you for showing me where the edge is. I am showing you that I desire to expand the edge, to expand my edges. This is how we expand, right? Okay. So yeah, heavy. Yep. Yep. My lungs felt like they couldn't open enough squished. That was where my human limit was. But when I called in earth and Akashic energy, my lungs relaxed and lifted out of the sand. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Ninka. Okay. Yes. Like a polar plunge, Sherry, a hundred percent, a hundred. This is why people do these things. And let me be clear, this is not for everybody. Like you also want to keep in mind, some of these areas of intensity are not going to feel aligned for you to expose yourself to, at least not right now, right? So kind of feel into what is the area that your body, that your field desires to expand its edge, okay? All right, so the more space you choose to expand your edge and the more devoted you are to continually expanding this little by little, the more room you're going to have as a buffer when more intensity comes in, the more space we create internally, that we create energetically, whether it's in the body or in the auric field, the more space we have to receive the intensity coming in and getting rocked less. So that when that rush of Akashic energy comes into us, and that huge intuitive download or that myriad of downloads come in, there's more space for that to play and organize 
and come into alignment with our physical body and our energy fields. Right? And so you're giving yourself a buffer by doing this, which is yes, expanding your capacity to hold more, but also offering yourself more space for that energy to realign and find its beautiful match in your energy field. So that when you're delivering energy and exchanging with other people, you're more intentional, you're more deliberate, and you're more precise and refined. And you're coming from a place of more anchoredness and centeredness. It really expands the confidence. Okay. All right. So that's temperature and density. And if you want to play with this sensationally, it's almost envisioning that there is the, the bulb of a, of a temperature gauge right in your root chakra, right at the base of your spine, and you're pulling the heat up, right? allowing that to boil, 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 boil up into the heart space, which is kind of where for me, I'm like, okay, that's good. Nice deep breath and let it go down a little. And then again, like seasons, like flow, it can then start rising a little, probably come up to the throat, take a nice deep breath in, bring in that cool Akashic energy, allow it to go down a little bit and then it comes back up, right? Like this doesn't have to be intensity or bust. You can do this in waves, right? Okay. So just feeling into those sensations. The third area, which I accidentally gave away earlier, was is pressure and force, okay? This is a big one. This is the one that most people consider and think of when they think of intensity is pressure or force, okay? This is the def part of the definition of intensity, extreme degree of strength, force, energy, or feeling, okay? And this is the one that can feel daunting and intimidating for us. This is where we are, when this intensity comes at us, it's asking us to really rise into personal leadership. Like I know who I am, I know I've got this, I know source has got me, nothing can trump source energy. Source energy creates and holds all things, expands all things, completes all things that are meant to complete, right? So this is us being invited into a deeper understanding of our magnitude. Okay. So this is about letting the waves of intensity complete their cycle when we have pressure or force coming at us. Okay. We have pressure or force coming at us either internally or externally, right? So I can feel pressure internally a lot that I've placed on myself intentionally or unintentionally. And I can have pressure coming at me from outside or force coming at me from outside. You got to get this to me now. Who says? Why? What's going to happen if I don't? And a lot of people will say, oh, this is you being defiant. This is your inner teenager coming up and being like, no, I don't want to, right? So yeah, I mean, you can tune into that and identify if it's really coming from there. Or if it's like, no, it's actually coming from a place of really, really grounded, solid conviction because I know exactly what this means for my future, for the collective future. And I believe in it so deeply that I am taking this mission that God has placed on my heart more seriously than your deadline. And this is what scares the shit out of people. Cause it's like, oh my gosh, well, if I actually present myself that way, I'm going to lose my job or I'm going to like lose relationships or whatever. You don't have to come at it from a bitchy edge, right? You're coming at it with love and it's being like, I so appreciate that this is weighing heavy on you. I so appreciate that this, but that's their heaviness. That's their pressure. That's their concern that they need to be with, that they need to sit with. That you don't need to own if it doesn't feel like it is forwarding your capacity and your soul's purpose. So the question to ask in this situation is, does this expand me and make a smile form on my face? Or does it contract me and shut me down? And if you're in a position where it does contract you and shut you down, but it's a boss and it's your job and you'll have no paycheck and you're not in a space where you are quite ready and you're human to be able to make a shift, you can still use that window of opportunity to decide in your mind that this is not resonant and that you no longer align with it and that you choose to bring something else into your world and trust and believe that the space will be created for that as you continue to create space for yourself, your breath, the Akash, the earth energy, your inner energy, 
right? As you continue to stay connected to that and create space for that, the, the how and the concrete steps and the invitations and opportunities to invite you out of that contractive experience are going to be coming. And sooner rather than later, the more that you release the grip on having it have to change because you can't tolerate the intensity anymore. But maybe you're meant to stay in this right now. Maybe you're meant to be in the sustained intensity right now where you're contracting because you're meant to, to be, to show yourself and to receive the invitation that you can hold duality at the same time. You can hold pressure at the same time that you can hold freedom and joy and the firm convicted decision that you know exactly where you're meant to go and where you're being drawn. And that actually this intensity is here to expand your capacity to hold energy because what's coming in is even bigger, but it's in the form of abundance in whatever form, love, connection, intimacy, health, energy, money, right? And so this is also coming in and you're being asked to hold this and make this sensation bigger in your field than this. It doesn't mean this goes away necessarily right there in the moment. It may need to be sustained so that you're held accountable for continuing to return to choosing, immersing in, and fully embodying freedom and joy. And then as you continue to do this, and this continues to get bigger and bigger in freedom and joy, the intensity starts, the pressure starts to feel like less of a pull. And it starts to feel smaller. So it isn't always about get rid of the intensity. Because again, this is a part of us that is being shown for our own alchemy into our next level. And we don't want to reject any parts of ourselves that are being presented by source, right? And if your answer to this, these, these waves that come in, this force, this pressure that's coming in is, yes, this does expand me and make a smile form on my face. Yes, it does. Breathe into it. Be with it. Hold it. Open up your capacity for bringing in more freedom, more joy, more elation, more love, more expansion. Yes, I'm here for this intensity too. Let's be with it. Let's breathe into it. Okay. All right. I want you to close your eyes for a second. And I want you to imagine that I'm coming at you. As you are sitting in your seat, you're anchored, you're solid, you're centered, you know who you are. And I'm going to come at you with strength and force. Whatever that looks like or feels like in your body, let it just be created into whatever vision comes forward. I'm going to come at you with force and strength. Your nervous system's first response is going to be defense and protection. But guess what? We're going to practice something else here. You've got you. What if you've got you entirely? What if source has got you? What if you have everything you need to withstand everything coming at you? What if you just say to me, coming at you with strength and force, I see you. You stay completely still. You are unrocked. I see you. I hear you, Laura. I see you. I hear you. What part of what of me coming at you with strength and force is for you? What part expands you? What part contracts you? If any, if something is truly threatening your livelihood, you can see and hear someone and, and not be available for what you're being given without reactivity. I see you. I hear you. I see you. I hear you. I see you. I hear you. Say it over and over again, because what you're doing is you are placing that energy in my field. That is for me to own. That is not for you to own. I see you. I hear you. You do not have to accept this. And if you're in a physical situation where you can turn on your heel and walk away, feel free to do so quietly, silently. You don't even need to say anything if you don't want. In, internally, you can say, I see you. I hear you. 
or say it out loud, I see you, I hear you. That entirely is going to diffuse it within you. You become a reliable source of caretaking and nourishment for yourself. And in so doing, you have now anchored even more deeply in the ability to withstand what comes your way. Okay, so that's a big one. That's number three. How does that feel? How did that feel with me coming at you? Deep breaths here, guys. A lot of energy moving. You visualize a wave, right? Some of them crash very gently. It's like this very soft. And some of them really crash hard, right? When we let the wave complete its cycle. So when you're saying, I see you and I hear you, I may have a full-blown meltdown. I may have a complete rage fest. I may have a tantrum. I may break into tears. I may fall into your arms. There's so many ways this could go. And we want to remove this predictive text that goes on in our mind and body and energy field as to how I'm going to respond to that I see you and I hear you. We want to give everyone on this planet the benefit of the doubt to be able to soften and respond to universal energy when we embody it and witness it from a space of divinity. Okay. <clears throat> the fourth area, <clears throat> magnitude and quantity. Magnitude and quantity. So the way this comes up for me is it reminds me of somebody who, and I've seen this so many times as a therapist of 20 years, people who get accustomed to the magnitude and the quantity of yelling in their household when they grow up and like cursing at each other and like calling each other names and all of this. And then they come to me for therapy and they're like, I don't know why my self-esteem sucks. And then we start talking about, you know, their their history, if it comes up, if it's, if it's relevant and it's, oh yeah, but I'm used to that. That's no big deal. I mean, I'm used to that. It's no big deal. Right. Whereas like, if I walked into that and I wasn't used to that, it would be feel like intensity to my nervous system. And so this is about like the quantity. This is also like the quantity of downloads that are coming in. Like, oh my gosh, I'm just getting, and these immense downloads. This is a big one for intuitives, right? I'm getting so many downloads coming in. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, right? And this is where we have, we have a tiny little bit of a micro shift around the space conversation, which is this is where you demand space. This is where you demand space. Because when the magnitude and the quantity comes in, this is an eager invitation for you to become even more of you. Okay, to become even more of you. What does that mean? That means you're being shown fractals and aspects of who you are, and you get to use your discernment to decide what's for you and what's not. All of this magnitude and quantity comes in and it's being able to put it into a bubble and have a drain come off that bubble all the way down into the earth and asking for what percentage of this is actually mine. And anything that is not drains down that bubble because what's left, that energy that's left is energy that your field and your system know exactly what to do and how to work with. They know exactly what to do with it. They know exactly how to work with it. Okay. So, mm, I love that, Heather. You feel like you had an invisible barrier that protected you from your force coming at me. Mm, I love that. And this is very different from shielding our energy fields, which I think is a bunch of BS in the energy world, to be honest with you. I think that it's a helpful visualization when you're very early on in your intuitive journey. But I think that when we, th when we intentionally decide to protect ourselves, then we are implying that there's something out there that is more powerful than us that can thwart our power, right? And if we think, well, I don't want to, I don't want to die. I don't want to, that's your nervous system gripping onto survival. That's fear, right? And so this is really about you being able to anchor in you, all right? So 
So yeah, so it's it's the all these intuitive downloads coming through. We're talking about magnitude and quantity, right? And it's like you're being invited to be more of you, to see all these fractals of you, to have this discernment, to put it all into a bubble and to drain what's not yours. And then what's left is what you are meant to work with, right? And that's when we can say, okay, I see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Let me bring you to me. Let me soak in you. Let me be present with you. Let me be with you for a little while. Let me feel into your vibration. Allow that aspect of you to grow and expand. Allow that aspect of you to become more of you, to merge with previous parts of you, to merge with the current energy that exists as you, to expand you into more of you. This is what magnitude and quantity is. It's an invitation into more of you. It's also knowing that when you have that energy that's left for you and you're with it, anything that is meant to be seen, to be released, or that no longer aligns will absolutely come up automatically to show itself to you. Absolutely it will. And so you don't have to go searching for what do I need to heal? What do I need to shift? What do I need to create space for? We don't need to do this with the mind. Be with what's coming up. Okay. And demand the space. It's not okay to say, well, okay, well, I just had to keep going because my kids were asking for me, or I just had to do da, 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 da because of this, right? No, not okay. This mission you've been given is bigger than anything else. Unless your kids are really in dire need, right? Or the person is really in dire need and it's like life or death. It's like, I'll absolutely be there. I need to take five minutes of space to be with me. I need to take five minutes of space for me to allow this to integrate, okay? I'm going to breathe into my capacity to expand more of me. Because guess what? This is right back to that original question I asked you. Do you desire more of you? Do you desire to be with all of you? Are you willing to receive all of you? Every piece of shame, every piece of doubt, every story, all of it, without it having to consciously come into your awareness, are you willing to hold and receive and be with all of you? Do you desire more of yourself? And if you have trouble with that question, I encourage you to sit with it. Do you desire more of yourself? Because the idea is, yes, you do desire more of yourself. You just may not consciously understand that or it might freak you out a little bit. Okay, so that's magnitude and quantity, okay? Because what we're focusing on here is when we're talking about more of us, we're talking about returning to our natural state of being, right? Our natural state of being is not yelling and screaming at everybody as it, or receiving that as a child. That is not your soul's desired state of being. That is not your desired state of being. You may have become accustomed to it, but that's conditioning, right? And so that's why it's really important for us to, to hone this intuitive discernment so that we can be really clear about what is conditioning and what is our soul. Okay. All right. The fifth and final pillar here of intensity is sincerity and intention. That intensity can come, come, can come in through sincerity and intention. So with this, I love this one so much because this one is truly, it's so subjective. This shows you how subjective intensity is. I can see something as like, like my mother is just like, holy crap, I can't believe how much you can hold. Like, I cannot believe how like little things bug you, right? And, and X, Y, and Z situations. And yet there'll be like the littlest thing that, like like Daisy, who works with me, sent me a picture yesterday um, to put up a picture for my Akashic Mentorship Intensive. And I was like, I hate that picture. It's like, it literally makes me angry inside. Like, oh, 
right? And she's like, oh, I like it, right? So it's realizing that intensity is so subjective. And because of this, when we're looking at sincerity and intention here, it's like everything everything is energy. Everything that's coming toward us is energy. It doesn't mean anything. The picture doesn't mean anything, right? The fact that so-and-so slammed the door in your face doesn't mean anything unless you make it mean something, right? I'll give you an example of this, okay? With sincerity and intention. So this is like, how seriously are you taking the intensity that's coming at you? How seriously are you taking this? And then I'll talk about intention in a minute. But so Friday, I took the first sick day that I've taken in a very long time. And I used to take, I mean, after I got sepsis, I mean, I was calling out all the time, right? Um, but oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've done that. It's so exciting. But anyway, and so on Friday, I took a sick day. I was, I was just shot, man. I was shot. And I, my, the first thing that came into my mind in the morning was, where have I been pushing through where I shouldn't be pushing through? Or where have I been like in my masculine energy and kind of lost my balance and my harmony with the masculine and feminine? And then I thought, sat with myself and I was like, you know what? That doesn't, that doesn't feel good in my body. That doesn't feel good to me. And it doesn't feel right either. Like it doesn't feel accurate. And so I was like, all right, I tuned into, I went up into the Akashic records and I tuned into my soul. And I was like, what is this? Like, what is this really about? Right. Cause I knew, I knew on the surface that it could be an energetic shift, right? Like an energetic adjustment process because I've been doing some really deep expansion. And so I sat with it and it was like, oh Yeah your body is is recoding. Your body is catching up to the energetic and consciousness shifts that have happened, but your body is literally in a space of recoding. I was like, oh yes, that's exactly what's happening. And what's so cool is literally the next day I woke up, million bucks. Didn't stay down, didn't say I laid down all day. And I didn't make it mean anything other than my body's recoding and I'm offering myself space. And I can see with that level of discernment where in previous times when I was suffering with chronic illness and recovering from sepsis, there were times when I would get knocked down like that. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, what did I eat differently? What did I do differently? What did I do wrong? Or like, oh my gosh, I need to heal this or I need to change this or I need to remove this from my field or da, 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 da. And it, it was coming from a mindset of lack of something being wrong rather than every single thing that occurs is in service of and in the process of my expansion. It's all happening. We talk about it's all happening for us rather than to us, right? But listen, if you've been going a million miles a minute and never taking any time for yourself, then fine. Okay, consider that. <laughs> like, okay. But for those of us who do take a lot of space, who are very present with ourselves, who do really offer a really good balance of like play and being in the human life and also being really present with what comes up energetically, right? Don't confuse momentum with anxiety or chaos that's presenting in your field. Because what this was on Friday, even though it was laying on my ass, was momentum energetic momentum. And if I had confused that as anxiety and chaos or something being wrong or me having done something that was amiss, it leaves me in it longer, right? It leaves me in it longer. So it's bring a curiosity, a playfulness, and a deep knowing that you are always expanding. This is where intention comes in. When we can place our intention and our sincerity on that, that we know we're always expanding, that we know it's always in process and that this is a vital, enriching, nourishing part of the process that deeply serves us and everyone around us, it's a very different sensation with intensity. Very different sensation with intensity, right? So let's review. Before I do that, one last thing to say on that. This is important to disconnect the stories that come up in your brain about anything that's happening in your world. And this, I mean, this is why I have so many friends that are conscious, right? Because 
it's like, we need to remind each other because we're just humans. We're going to, we're going to get distracted by the human sauce. We just are like, it's, you know, it's, it's part of being here in this, in this, in these bodies. Okay. So we're not going to shame ourselves for that because every single one of us is always learning and growing. Right. And so it's like, I can say to my friend, like, oh my gosh, this person's oh, such a douchebag. He's being such a douchebag. Like I can't. And it's like, remember, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. This person is energy. This person is an activation sent to me by source to activate my field into presence with what is coming up within me to be alchemized, transformed, shifted, expanded. And it's wild because when we approach it from this perspective, you will see shifts in the people around you and how they're responding to you and how they see you and how they receive you. And you will have the evidence that your human so desperately desires to have to confirm that this is the right path, right? Okay, this feels really good. So let's just review, guys. We started out with talking about this do you desire to hold all that you're meant to hold? Are you willing to hold what you're meant to on behalf of God's mission through you, right? You can have it all if you can hold it all. Intensity is not an emotion. Emotion is the byproduct of intensity. And they are actually here to invite us into more mastery of our physical human experience so that we have more space and anchoredness within to be able to have more of a buffer zone for intensity when it arrives. If you're feeling like it's unrelenting pressure, you're trying to do too much on your own and you're in resistance of the energy because you don't have to hold on to anything. Energy is always moving. It's always gonna move through. You don't have to hold on to anything. Okay, you're gripping. There's a part of you that's gripping to it. Admit that there's pleasure in the pain of the things that can come up in your life. Admit that there's benefit to that because that allows that intention to shift from sincerity of, oh my gosh, I have all this pressure on me and I have to do X, Y, and Z to relieve it to, wow, I now have this intention to be with this part of myself, to enfold it into this new version of me and to breathe into expanding my capacity. The types of intensity we talked about are pace and timing. That was the quicksand example. This is honoring the seasons of life and following the energy and enhancing and refining your intuition. Being really subtly cued in to the nuances of your own energy. So that you know exactly what is meant for you and what is not meant for you at this moment in time. What is for now? What is for later? And the space that you're meant to expand in your field so that you have this curious perspective that isn't rushed, even if the quicksand is rushed, your curious perspective doesn't have to be rushed because you know without a doubt that the resources that you have available to you are accessible to keep you exactly where you're meant to be. The second is temperature and density. This is about tuning into the nervous system and feeling into that edge and choosing to extend beyond the edge and then doing it little by little to continue to expand this room, this buffer, and communicating directly to the universe, I do want my temperature to rise. And you can look at that a different way because some people will say, well, if my temperature rises, then I'm down in the center of Mother Earth, right? Because that's technically the hot energy and the cool energy is up in the Akash. But what I'm really referring to is Kundalini energy right? Kundalini energy is that like fire at the base of your spine that rises up through the crown and kind of opens the crown and then opens it up to bringing in the cooling energy from the Akash. So that's what I mean by temperature rising. The third area is pressure or force. This is letting the waves complete their cycle with what's coming in. Does this expand me and make a smile form on my face or does it contract me? This is when I was coming at you with strength and force, knowing you've got you. I see you, I hear you. I see you, I hear you. 
The fourth area, magnitude and quantity, right? Everyone's got a different capacity here. And you're going to be, it's like your capacity is going to partially be dependent on what you're, like what you've been exposed to, what you're, what you're accustomed to, right? And so being able to really use your discernment to identify what's not yours and allow it to drain and work with what is yours and be really compassionate and present with it and allow yourself to soak in it to return back to the desired state of your natural system. And then the fifth area of intensity is sincerity intention and, and, and intention. How seriously are you taking what's coming at you? What meaning are you placing on it? What are you making it mean about you? And allowing yourself to shift into understanding that instead of being in, what did I do wrong? What do I need to do differently? What do I need to heal? What do I need to fix? It's, I am recoding. I am in a space of recoding to match a higher level of consciousness that I'm clearly being invited into, right? Not, not confusing momentum, which is what really is happening when this intensity comes in for anxiety and chaos. It's momentum. When you can harness it in the ways that we talked about today, okay? There were a couple questions that came in before I, I went live here today. I've already answered two of them just in this content, but there's another one. Um, and this was actually Danuta's example around having nightmares, like kind of relentless nightmares and difficulty sleeping. And the answer that comes through around this, um, around intensity and, and being able to kind of hold and move through this is, is that you're shedding. What came through was that you're shedding and you want to, to have space for shedding, like you're shedding in your nightmares. It's aspects that are coming up to be seen and released. And so this is another, I see you, I hear you, right? And a deep trust that this is your expansion process. It's nothing to fear, but what's happening is if you're shrinking from it, if you're getting knocked down from it, if you're feeling knocked by it in any way, shape or form, then you're a victim to it, right? And when we're sitting in victim space, we're not in trust and knowing that this is this is alchemy, this is expansion. So the question here is, this is about holding duality. This is about holding that freedom and that pressure like we talked about under the pressure force pillar, right? Which is, can you choose to be energized and free and tired? Can you choose to be energized and free and frustrated with the nightmares? Can you hold both? That's what you're being invited to because you can choose to be energized and free in whatever situation you happen to be in. And you're going to find that you'll ebb and flow with this because we're humans. We're naturally cyclical by nature here, right? And so it's like, okay, I can choose to be energized and free. And then there might be a time later on in the day when my body desires a nap. Great, honor it, listen to it. But follow the cycles. And if you're in frustration around it, you're resisting the cycle and the natural flow. And sometimes a lot of people feel this way because they have nine to five jobs to work. And it's like, well, yeah. And so you are, you're resisting the natural flow. How can you bring more of that natural flow into what you're already doing and hold both? Because I'll tell you, I was just talking to a client earlier today. I had an Akashic record session this morning and it was about like, you don't have to leave your job to feel the freedom you desire. You can decide, yes, I'm leaving the job. We talked about this a little earlier. You can decide, yes, I'm leaving the job. This is no longer for me. And then allow the lessons that are still coming from you being in the job, because you wouldn't be in it if you weren't still meant to be, excuse me, <clears throat> to be an exercise or an invitation into, I get to hold the pressure and the uh, of this job with the, it's serving my highest and best. I'm expanding like a freaking champ, right? And I know where I'm going. And then as that continues to be more convicted and more dialed in, the job starts to fall away, right? Okay, so I know that we had some technological issues today and a lot of you were not able to get back into the live. I'm not, I haven't seen comments for a long time. So um, I was hoping to do a little bit more Q&A in this experience, but um, if there are questions that come up, please feel free to drop them. I will get to as many as I can. Um, but 
I'm also going to trust this energy, right? I'm going to trust that this was meant to be this way for a reason, one that I don't understand or know. But um, what I'm going to invite you into is um, Akashic Immersion, because this is where we do this work like champs. Um, and you, the important part of this, I, it, it's really important, in my opinion, to be in a container or in the presence of someone who can really hold you, whether it's with me, whether it's with someone else, whether it's um, somebody in your family, right? But we, the fact is we expand wider, we expand bigger, we expand higher, and we expand quicker when we are held by other human beings as we do this work. And especially human beings that have mastered this and have the discernment to support you in it. And that's what Akashic Immersion is. It's not all about the Akashic Records in any way, shape or form. I like to anchor in the Akashic Records as my spiritual home because it's a very, very nourishing, activating, encouraging, um, momentum-based space that really invites you into higher realms of consciousness. So any beings that you channel, any intuitive energies that you work with, are relevant in this space. I just anchor in the Akash to give us that spiritual tether while we are expanding other dimensions of consciousness. And this round, we're gonna be bringing in so many brilliant new earth energies to really align with the new paradigm, which is, I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. I just started doing this in my last few uh, modules in Vitality and it's just it's just amazing. And, and the momentum is right in line with the cosmic energy right now with eclipse season beginning. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited. And this is going to be the last round that I'm offering at 550 because the next round is going to be a thousand or more um, simply because I'm going to be adding a lot more, even more support. Like we're going to be having a lot more messaging support and the energies are going to be up leveling to, they already have, honestly, the people who are in this round at 550 are getting access to the vibrational match of that higher level container that's going to be coming um, in Akashic Immersion the next time I offer it. So um, you, I just dropped the link. You can read about it. Send me a message on Messenger if you have questions about Akashic Immersion. If you want to know if it's a good fit for you, if you want to know if you're ready for it, I can tune into your soul. I will tell you very, very clearly and honestly what your soul is desiring. Just like the woman I talked to this morning, I was like, you're not ready yet, right? Like, I will very clearly and honestly tell you what is in alignment with your soul and your soul's path at this time. But I'm telling you, working together with me in this energy at the level of expansion that I'm in now is going to blow your mind and knock your socks off. <laughs> and the fact is, is that it's very, very customized to your pace. And so it gets to trickle in in the way that feels digestible for you so that your field doesn't feel too overwhelmed. It's mastering intensity in a very deliberate, refined way that feels safe and super expansive and fun. Okay. So I love you. Thank you for being here. I'm going to announce the winner now for the, um, for those of you who submitted donations to Sparrow's Nest Charity. Thank you so much. I'm so, 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 so great. I can't even tell you like when these donations started coming in, I was more excited than I just, I was so excited. Then I, then I realized I would be like, I was just like, this is so amazing. Like you people are so amazing that you're, that you're giving on behalf of people who have been diagnosed with cancer, who need support, who need extra love, extra TLC and an extra energy. And you guys have, have so generously offered to that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it holds my heart so beautifully to feel that from you. Um, and everyone who gave, we put your name into a hat and um, and chose the winner. And the, the winner of the uh, Akashic card reading is Hannah Wolnowitz. So Hannah, you are the winner of the free Akashic card reading. So I will reach out to you over Facebook Messenger. And um, I'm excited. These are fun. My card readings are super fun. And if you, if any of you guys want to grab one, um, the one I'm going to be giving Hannah is going to be a little bit more in depth. But if you want to buy um, a reading, let's see if this transfers over. Oh my gosh, it did. If you want to buy your own, you can. 
Um, and just jump in. Beautiful and genius is always divine timing as I've been working on this without knowing why you're just validated, explained it all. Thank you, Laura. You're so welcome, Sherry. And I'm grateful that I got a comment, <laughs> getting a random comment. So yay, celebrating that. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to buy a, a quick reading, these are like super quick readings. The one I'm going to be giving Hannah is going to be a little bit more in depth um, as a, as a, just a, a real deep thank you for, for donating and being part of this experience and receiving all of this energy. Um, but, but these, these card readings are literally always on point, like so on point, they will cut right to your core, <laughs> like right to your core. They're very direct. Um, and always come from a place of love and expansion but it's, they're fun. They're fun to play with. They're fun to receive their, um, it's wisdom that will allow you to shift just a micro shift into a new direction that will open up a pathway in your field that feels really refreshing and lightening. So, uh, so yeah, if you want to do that, go ahead and grab it. But I would really love if this resonated with you and felt very alive in your field, I really recommend that you join me in this round of Akashic immersion because, uh, the energy is super ripe. And I am, I'm excited to welcome you in. So thank you for being here with me. Thank you for your patience too, with the technological issues that came forward and for, for coming back and watching this on replay, even though we weren't able to, to necessarily chat as much as I wanted to, I wanted to this to be a little bit more interactive today and, and, and field more um, of what was coming up in your field and, and hold you more in this. So, so please feel free to leave some comments later. And, um, and I'll do my best to get back to as many as I can. And I love you and I will see you very soon. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.